Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, this is going to be a little bit of a working session. Um, show you some new ideas that I'm working on for Dream Sequence 1.4. And um, uh, you know, this this could come out very quickly, or you know, I might kind of sit on it for a couple more weeks. Maybe I'll put out a dev version for folks to try and get some feedback. It's going to require some changes to Grid um, and and Norns, and um, I'm always a little freaked out about that. Just don't want to change stuff every month, you know, it gets old. Okay, I like that. Uh, just gonna get a chord pattern for us to deal with here. Okay, that'll have to do. So, um, actually, the new stuff has nothing to do with chords. It's all about um, seek. So let's uh, let's throw something down here. I'm going to um, change this. Okay, so the first thing uh, that's new is, you may have seen in the last video I did, I was playing around with this a little bit. Um, there's now a poly mode for Seek here. Let's show you what that sounds like. And so on and so forth. turn off chords just so we can focus on this a little bit. So here's what's going on. Um, this first parameter here, priority, basically says, you know, play notes from left to right, and the polyphony, it tells us how many notes um, we're going to actually play. So one just means we're playing this guy, two, going to do these, and so on forth, um, three and four. Now we can change that around. If we did like um, uh, left to right, we could do um, right to left instead, and we'd start with the top ones. So it's kind of neat because you can extract these melodies uh, or harmonies from uh, one pattern. There's also a, um, a mode in here for a random note priority, which means you're basically making uh, like these note pools and it will just randomly pick one note out of there, even if you're sending this out to, you know, Crow CV or something. It's sort of like a semi-random, random with a bit of control. Of course, this works with all of the uh, various note mapping options. There's also a new mapping option here that um, I'm not going to do because it's going to be a disaster if I try, which is chromatic plus transpose. And uh, what that does is, unlike the, um, the diatonic transposition, uh, di that's a diatonic transposition, this is a um, uh, it's basically interval based, you know, the first uh, column 
is your root note, and then it's all of the chromatic intervals, which means you can uh, you can kind of like program in whatever custom chord voicing you want. Uh, the trick is, of course, you have to sort of synchronize those so that um, you know your chord pattern sets the root, and then the seek pattern sets the intervals, and uh, they have to be running at the same uh, step frequency. So I don't know. I mean, people have always asked for um, a way of defining custom chords. This is sort of a workaround until I can put some time into doing that right. Um, but it, it is kind of interesting. Um, since I don't really know my chord theory, you know, trying to pick out the right intervals is going to be a disaster. So I'm going to I'm going to sidestep that one. Let's just stick with uh, sevens are kind of working for me. Okay, so that's uh, one new thing. The other new thing is um, there's a, a second seek now. Seek two. Let's see if we can um, do something here. Maybe I'll do a uh, run it at a different God, I read this before there's a bug with mono I haven't, I haven't fixed that So on headphones, this is Seek 2 is kind of panned to the right. Seek 1 is panned to the left. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the, the main new stuff. There's some other goodies buried in here um, that I'll talk about later. Where I'm struggling a little bit is um, just the, the interface. You know, it's the first time I've added something new that we need to navigate to using grid. And so for now, um, you know, as you probably know, if you've been using dream sequence, we got arrange record seek, and then there's seek one and two, you can switch between, um, big differences, of course, unlike, um, chords where you can only have one at a time. These, these run at the, um, side by side you can have different timings, different swing and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So, um, I think I'm probably happy with two of these. I initially thought I would have four. It would be pretty easy to add four, but um, there's there's a lot of overhead involved in it. And it's mostly just a, a matter of like how to fit them all in here. So one thing I wanted to do is have a way of quickly turning these um, sequences on and off. I thought I would have like a little modifier here to like, you know, turn on and off. That way you can do both of them at once. It's not ergonomically really awesome. Oh, and I haven't, you know, I haven't done anything with it yet. It just put the light on there. So that's one way of doing it. Um, I've also thought about maybe changing these and giving a dedicated button for Seek 2, which would be cool. But what that means is we'd have four of these guys being used up. And I don't like having a continuous chunk of controls that are, you know, look like one control and it's really two. That just doesn't seem ideal. I've thought about like changing this so it's like a toggle. You can like tap through them or something. I don't know, there's, there's a million different ways of doing it. Um, probably gonna require some changes though. Uh, other thing I could do is, you know, if, if these were dedicated, it means that the seeks could also have their own patterns, kind of like chords do. Um, again, I'm just, I'm not really that into trying to cram every single possible feature into dream sequence. I, I kind of appreciate a simpler, more minimalist uh, workflow that um, requires you to be a little bit more creative, you know, coming up with, with ideas. And, um, so I think if I can get away with having just one pattern per, per seek, I, I would like to do that. 
So this is the general direction I'm going, but uh, I, I just need people to play with it, I think, and give me some feedback, and I, I need to do the same, really. Um, I'll show you one other idea that I came up with the other day and poorly implemented, but um, it's kind of fun. Let's see if I can get this set up again. Uh, we're on Seek 1, you know, it's uh, set to a four-step loop and uh, just to kind of get a starting point. Just punching in a little progression there. So uh, what should happen is um, you know, pattern rotate is zero. I've set it to have a an event that will increment by negative four, which moves everything up, and then it will wrap once it gets to step. Um, when it tries to go to step fifteen, it will wrap around to um, to zero um, rotation of zero. And so the reason this will hopefully work is I've made a change. Um, previously, when you rotated a pattern, it would just rotate the, the looped portion, which, um, which is kind of nice, you know, has some, some utility, but I've changed it now so that when you rotate the pattern, it will rotate, uh, at the, the entire pattern, um, which I, I think makes sense. I may put back like a rotate loop option or something at some point, or maybe just have a, an option to do either or, um, but I wanted to try this because you know, I had this kind of desire to have more than one um, pattern for Seek, but I thought maybe it would be interesting to try to let new patterns emerge by just doing this like rotation automation. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna play through and um, try to like improvise. It'll be like a, you know, overdubbing on a weird sequence tape loop sort of thing. Okay, this is um, kind of garbage. <laughs> Can't win them all, but it is a neat idea. I want to I want to keep playing around with that. So another thing to try if I do put this out, keep a lookout for that. <laughs> 